Okay, so we're going to go in and have a look at um, under-1500 Rapid Arena. And we'll select the top-rated player to watch and see how they get on. Current top one is 1488. It starts in 25 seconds, so I think we'll, we'll wait until it starts and then put the watch on because I'm not too sure if it catches the watch before before the games or if it just watches i know it watches when you're in the arenas and continues on but if they take a break and stuff then i might have to jump onto somebody else if they're not in the game so they're still number one looks like it started so let's just jump in and see if we can watch them It's a 10 minute zero increment game and they're already blitzing out the moves like crazy. Look how fast they're moving. Wow. Okay, so it's under 1500. And basically looking at the traits and looking at the behaviours. Obviously this is one of them, blitzing out moves in a 10 minute game. And our player's already a pawn down, but is the position any good? It's probably looking to get an x-ray through to the king here. Opponent's knights are out, but the bishop's not out. Still stuck on the back. White's position looks a little bit better. It looks a bit more free. I don't know why they bothered brought it, bringing the bishop back here, actually, attacking the knight. It's just giving it up. So, not really looking too much at position. Just looking at trying to get pieces off the board. Um, let's try and get into the groove. Because they just caught me by surprise, the speed at which they were moving there. I know they like to move fast, but... So within the 1500 mark, I'm going to try and be consistent with um, our previous videos of the uh, under 1500 area. And in essence, it's probably like one, two calculations, if anything. And really looking at if they've got a piece to take, they're going to take that piece off the board. Not necessarily looking too much at, at position. And just looking to really just target pieces and get pieces off the board. There might be elements of trying to be grandiose with the sort of flowery tactics. And that's why I would probably put these kind of players in that area as tactical. So, at this moment in time, it's looking like it's going a bit slow now. So... Main thing for me is when you, when looking at these these games, especially the under fifteen hundred area, is they've blitzed out all the moves like anything, bulleted out the moves, and now they're starting to look at the position. Look what they've just given up. The queen, just as we were saying, okay. So that's the player we're watching at this moment in time. They're the highest rated player on here. And they've just given up their queen. They had time to take the time. But they were focused on going for a pawn here. Always for the B pawn. And they didn't see the stealth bishop. Right. So they're playing as black now. And they're playing a very much lower rated player. Let's just get into the groove. Alright. So now it looks like. Oh my gosh. And they. The low rated player is just moving the king, just like a, almost like a bone cloud thing. Uh, just moving the king. <laughs> but it's annoying if the, um, if black can't actually take advantage of that because they've wasted time. They've not developed any pieces yet. If um, black can't take advantage, then they're going to feel kind of a little bit upset with themselves. They're out again with the queen. Always on the B file, but looking for a discover check on the king. Which goes to show that um, white isn't that stupid because they actually brought the pawn down to block off that attack there. So they know what's going on. So I don't know really why they've done this very, very strange opening. So the queen's protecting this pawn if they forget themselves. But the bishop is here, so maybe they're just going to go with the bishop taking. Or if they're looking to exchange the queen. Nope, and they've brought the bishop here, so... This is what I was saying, this strange opening that White's done is not necessarily giving White a 
main advantage. They are plus five, but they're still trying to go and squish the king. There probably are elements, knight can move here type thing. I don't know if he's got a white square bishop. It's not really going to get to here to here. That looks a bit long. But he has to be careful. This pawn's blocking the pawn at the minute. Don't forget he's got an x-ray through. Oh, and they've landed on the bishop as well. Oh, and they've missed the opportunity. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. Okay, but they've given up the bishop, which is going to get a check on the king. And then they might realise that the bishop can actually take the queen, maybe. Or are they going for a checkmate? Can't go there just yet because the knight is there protecting. So they've gone greedy munching for a rook, but they've still left this queen here. <laughs> oh my God. Ah, this is the life of under 1500s. This is, this is, this is me, real chess. This is, we're, we're play we're watching a real player here. Um, so they're not a computer user or anything like that. So that's, uh, <laughs> that's pleasing to the eyes. Human errors, human mistakes. Because it's really quite tiresome seeing perfect play. Do you know, it, it's just not real. It's not realistic at all. So the queen's come out, probably looking for this, but this knight is still guarding this area. So I'm thinking they're going to probably still try and go for it, you know. Oh, and the knight's been taken. Now they're going to go for it for the checkmate. And they've got it. There we go. All right, very good. So we know the watch is on. Depends if they get paired. Because these are 10-minute games, so really, they might not be getting paired too quickly. But we'll keep watching this player. We've seen them in the first game where they they blobbed their queen and then they blobbed capturing a queen here, but their position was slightly better, so they got advantage in the game. There's 50 minutes of the tournament left to go. We'll watch it all the way through. And they're on. They're playing as white. This player's a little bit closer to their rating. So simple capture. Knight up. Probably bringing this knight out. They'll be looking for this bishop thing going through here. Yeah, brings the knight out. Pushes the pawn up. Gets the bishop here. Okay, blocking the pawn. Not really a fan of the bishop blocking the pawns, but, you know, never think that it's losing because that happens. I've seen players do it. Just it's a little bit slower tempo-wise. So they're hitting the small bishop, the, the bishop here. We're just concerned about them looking to get this here. I know that's what they're looking for. What's this white square bishop really doing here? I'm not too sure at all. It doesn't seem to be doing the damn thing. It's probably going to end up bringing it back here just to defend the knight. Let's see what this bishop is actually doing here. And this poor jammed in bishop is unbelievable. So they're probably going to end up moving the knight. So the queen's now come across. Checkmate threat. What can be done about that? The dark square bishop can't get in to defend. Nothing can be done. So it's checkmate. It's going to look to escape the king. And they've lost a minor piece out of that. What is this white square bishop doing? That is the question still. What is this poor bishop able to do? What's this knight able to do? Has the queen trapped itself? Is there some mirac miraculous type of um, situation going on here? Again, the white square bishop still jammed in. I'm wanting to see what this magical bishop is going to do. Maybe that's going to save the game. It's got the knight in. Pawn's going to be taken. Obviously, this pawn can't take back. So, there's a lot of pressure on this pawn. Has he got anything to support it? Yeah, the white square bishop potentially coming here or here. The poor bishop is struggling to breathe, wants to get out. So, this is, white square bishop's got to make, make some use of itself, hasn't it? It's got to come here, as not it, really? Because this is obviously coming. Oh, well, it's gone there, but it's just going to get taken. So the power base of the bishop supporting this has gone. So I think it probably would have been better here because then at least the queen could come here. 
So I think this one might be all over for our guy or girl or whichever. It does say, say king, so maybe it's a guy. So they've captured, but that um, combination of things I don't think is going to board well. This pawn doesn't have any protection. Queen can come back and put a check on the king. King's dancing around. So the white square bishop has gone. So it's uh, probably looking to open up space if they've got time to do that. But I don't think they're going to get time. I think they'll be coming with the queen check. If the pawn pushes, just comes back down and chasing the king around. It's not saying they're in the best position, black, but they've got more opportunity to keep upsetting the king for white. Yep, yeah, exact position. Didn't really need too much thinking about that. So what's the king going to do? It could move to attack the knight. It's brought, well, it's, we did say pushing the pawn. It's just going to get chased around. Knight's not coming here just yet. Queen can go back and put a check on, but it's doing a lot of work with the queen. It's not really developing the other pieces, but it is annoying for white. So White's looking to try and jostle, maybe to get this, to then start putting pressure on this pawn. That's the only sneaky way they're going to get out of it. Knight's not going here. Probably going back to whence it came. Or is it going here for a sacrifice? Queen takes. Nah, that's not going to be any good. Could even just push the pawn down to protect it, because the knight's got a nice favourable position, really. It's a bit, oh, yeah, because it's a bit annoying here. And the king is still stuck in the middle, waiting for the queen to come across here, or even take this pawn. I'm surprised they didn't take the pawn with the queen, with the check. Maybe they were thinking the rook's going to come here, but they've got the pawn here. They've got annoying positions that the king come, so he's going to come here. Now this rook is going to be, does he go on castle? Oh, no. Yeah, the rook's coming here. King is just so suffocated, it's unreal. It's not getting in the game. Bishop's not getting in the game. Very negative position. Knight can come here to block, but this pawn is just going to touch it up. I don't really... It's trying to get this bishop in here, but it's too late. The knight can go anywhere. Could go here. Can it get a check on the queen? No, not quite, but it could just... Could take this pawn and get the rook off the board. Because his rook's got a check on the king. So that's what's going to happen. Knight takes here, check on the king. That's if they're wanting to go that route. They might even have a checkmate. Knight moves. King has to move or the knight goes in front. But like we said, that's easily dealt with with the pawn coming here. Oh, that's a waste. Oh, he could have just taken there. He's going to allow the king to come up here and then he can still take the knight. Oh, checkmate. Didn't see that. <laughs> well, we said he was having problems, um, our guy. Yeah, so he's got moments of brilliance against much lower rated players and players of the equal sort of standing as themselves. They, they struggle with position. So position is key in any chess game, you know. Um, just developing your pieces and blocking your pieces with like the bishop in the early part of this game really does lose you a lot of tempo and it's not um, really beneficial for working your pieces as a team. Black took advantage of that quite nicely and just um, just attacked the king area. And we're back on. Oh, so he's playing a much lower rated player again, 1100. So we'll see how he gets on here. It's 42 minutes left of the arena. Okay, let's have a look. Let's have a look. It's gone for small potatoes. It's a bit somber. Okay, so he's done that move. I like that move, but not so early on in the game like that. But never mind. It's just stopping that pawn from pushing here. And they're going for Fianchetto. So now look at this, our player, um, all really jammed in again. Bishop's not going anywhere. He's afraid to attack and he's allowing white to really get into the game. And now the queen is coming opposite their king. 
that cannot be good. So a small piece attacking the high piece can't be wrong. Queen's just coming here. He's looking to get the checkmate here. That's pretty obvious. But again, they kind of allowed them to come in there. They might be able to manage it. Yes, come straight across. And they're probably just going to push here like this, thinking that's blocking. So this pawn's going to shoot up now because he's got two pieces on there. So he has to do something. And so what does he do now? Now we'll be thinking, oh, I'm going to throw this up. But no, they don't. So the bishop's gone. Queen's going to be flying around the area. They're probably thinking bringing the queen here to protect the pawn. Still continuing on track. So he's ignoring everything that's happening in front of his king here. He's thinking maybe then, okay, if he does take, then the king can take. There's no support there. This knight's just jumping back into this space, looking to put pressure on the king. So looking more at the full picture of what is actually going on and not ignoring what the opponent can do to you. Um, yeah, he's attacking the queen, which is good. That is blocked that off. He's probably looking to do this. Maybe get here, but I'm not sure what that is going to do. So he's got checks on because the king is very airy, very airy. How does the queen get in? Not too sure, but it's still pressure. Uh, smaller piece attacking the higher piece. That's a good shot. So maybe in his head, ignoring the attack on his king, um, he didn't need to worry. But now the <laughs> they're always giving up the queens. Aren't they? <laughs> and now White's giving up their queen here. Yeah, so still potentially really looking at what the opponent can do to you. You really have to look at, well, okay, can I defend from there? And I think they got a little bit lucky again. But the opponent gave up their queen. So lots of errors, lots of mistakes, lots of um, issues and concerns that as a chess player, I'm looking at this, I'm, I'm just learning myself. I'm just reminding myself about what, what I need to do playing my games. Okay, so our guy's playing white. And it looks like they're looking to try and go for the um, fried liver type thing. Just based on that. They might not be doing any of that. So it's going to get challenged with the pawn. And they've now done this move here. For what reason? I am not sure at all. It's blocked off the knight. It's... <laughs> I don't know what... It's not defending anything. Oh, it's looking for a cheap shot on the king. But the thing is, the bishop can defend. Or the knight can defend. More so the bishop. So I'm not really sure why you'd want to come here. Are ah, you going here to then come back here to attack the B-pawn? Seems a little bit of a waste. Yeah, that was always going to be happening. So it's coming. Uh, I like doing that one, but I don't like just leaving my bishop here for this to attack. But the rook comes here. It's taking itself off the line. It's so easily defended. You see, this bishop can get trapped quite easily. But we'll see how um, black plays against it. Probably looking to castle now, but I, don't, I really don't know what this is. And now this knight can't get anywhere. So is it looking to attack this pawn here? Oh, it is. <laughs> it doesn't have to take. He could look to still think, oh, I'm going to trap this bishop. Yep. So if I go here, then the bishop can only go here. But they're, they're not thinking that far, so that's fine. Does he take with the pawn or the knight? Takes with the queen. Queen's attacking the rook. So he's got a little bit of vision. It's got a little bit of vision. Rook can come here for a momentary bit of safety or even here. So it's these single attacks type things. The only way it looks like they're working their pieces together is by accident, really. Because they do the one, two, if anything, calculations, more so ones, you know, attacking single attacks, single attacks. Like in the previous game as well. Uh, where Wyatt was doing their single attacks, looking to try and put a combination together, but they weren't really working together. They were like single attacks. So when you're doing a single attack, you're not really bothered about how you're ending up in your position on the board, which is a shame because then, by accident, you may end up in a good position and then it looks like you've worked your pieces together. If you break it down... They're only doing single attacks. 
So this knight's just come and attack the queen. It's not really bothered about its position now. I mean, look at this. X-ray through to the queen. So they're going to lose the rook. Those little tiny small details. And crucial for development in my game. And so that's why I'm, I like looking at these types of um, arenas. Doing my own assessment of what's actually happening. And it just solidifies in my head what I would expect from somebody playing at this level of play. Okay, so they up the exchange, probably going to take the knight. And now they're going to castle. Need to get the knight out. Needs to get activated. This knight's probably going to attack the queen as well. So a smaller piece attacking a higher piece. So that all makes sense because at this moment they don't have any other pieces developed. Bishop's still on the back as well. So there's more scope here, but the, it was all by accident. You know, White's play was just single attacks. Yeah, the knight. Yeah, let's go. And now they're going to realise, oh, I could put a check on the queen. So the knight goes here. Or oh, should do, rather. He's got two pieces, well, three pieces attacking this pawn. But the I don't think the queen will take. So I think he could go with the knight attacking the queen first. Oh no, he's gone defending it when he didn't need to go defending it. He's got to bring this knight here now, I think, just to win that important tempi. Oh dear, dear, dear. All right, okay. Still focus on this knight. Let's get this knight in before any... Oh, pushes the pawn. He's probably looking for the rook to come and face the queen off here, but this knight is so magical. Just get it here. So the pawn's on, so are they going for the queen exchange? Probably keep it simple. Opponent's signal keeps flicking. A little bit of a flicker. Goes with the knight. I've got this sense in my bones, right? Yeah, if, the, if this queen doesn't come off with the battery that they've got here, after all the good work that they've done playing as white, they're just going to get a checkmate. I just I can feel it in the water. Oh no, they're attacking the queen. I don't know what was wrong with this one, but never mind. Attacking the queen, so the bishop's gone. So that battery is out of the window. Owning the file with the rooks is key. Simple stuff. Just take it off the board. Don't get fancy, dude. Just take it off the board and you'll be you'll be right. He's overthinking, he's overthinking, he's not going to take the bishop, he's going to do something too fancy. Hey, nice one. I'll just get this rook here now on the file, I don't really see any problems with that now. Anything else? There's no point moving the knight, just bring the rook here, keep it simple. He's got the two on, but we've got the rook defending here at this point. Let's just bring the rook here, dude. So part of me thinks that they're kind of allowing them back in the game, even though they are up the exchange of the rook. So because they've not moved here so quick, I thought they're not going to do that. Either. Rooks like the open files. It's just, That's the most basic of basics of understanding of your chess play. Rooks like the open files and just get them piled up on there. Queen's no good here. He's just going to just come here with his rook. Unless there's something else that I'm missing, but really keeping basics. As I said earlier, understanding the basics of chess does help rather than trying to do advanced chess maneuvers and chess planning and strategy. You've got to learn the basics first and just work them. Yeah, so we did say the rook's just going to challenge the queen. Losing a bit of tempo there, unless, of course, I'm missing something, but the tempo is lost. I don't know where he's going with the queen. It's probably going back to where it started. Just remember, he's got two pieces on there, so he's going to have to keep um, keep tabs on this pawn. So that's a, like I'm saying, 
probably letting them in the game a bit. It might not be improving them too much, but this simple basic thing of Brooks owning the fouls could have helped assist them, assist a better position. So they're attacking this pawn that has it's now got three pieces attacking. So maybe they're pushing up just to hit the knight. But for something's telling me I can't really see that. Oh, they did. Okay, I thought I'd pushed it then. <laughs> they did actually push it. Good. All right, so now they can attack the rook. Although, being there earlier, I think what they're thinking is, okay, so take, take. Uh, nice one. So he's got a check, but it's not a checkmate because the bishop just comes back. So it just takes the rook off the board. A little bit too arty, you see, too arty because it's not really improved anything. And they probably, maybe they didn't even think that, oh, this bishop was coming back here, but they thought that was a checkmate, the speed at which they moved there then. I'll lay money on it, they thought that was a checkmate. So now all they'll be thinking is, can I get my rook here? And then that's done really, isn't it? Knight would have to come back. Well, can't, can't even defend. You can't defend that. Rook comes here. Where's he going? Oh, he's got a check on check on the king. Yes, he can do something. Yes, he can. Oh, he's going to... There we go. Yes, he can. <laughs> it's good to talk. Yeah, so they've got their little mate for it of their own. I did say, though, Linta says it looks like they're letting them back into the game. All because of those small, tiny manoeuvres. I think the knight should have been putting a little bit of a tempo win on the queen just to keep the pressure going. And definitely the rooks should have been owning the file here to get a better base um, of attack and defence. But because they got a bit flowery, it's a case of... Now the position is anyone's and it could be even favouring black... Even though they're up the exchange, now this rook is now having to defend this pawn. King's going to escape, but not too quickly, because if he does move, then the queen takes the bishop. But does it improve their position by taking that? Did they have anything else? Not really. I mean, he... Nah, he's not doing that. So this pawn is going to try and make its way down. I can't see anything else. He could move this pawn, so they're moving the king. So that probably wasn't the wrong pawn to move. So then it's at least off the line. Then the bishop can get into the game. Maybe looking to support this pawn pushing down, because he does have a passer, which can cause a bit of trouble. I'm not too sure about that, dude. So this or this pawn pushing down. Okay, they're thinking of something. He's bringing the queen to support the bishop. Well, maybe that was better, but I'm not in the game. It's always sideliners will see everything or not see everything. So where else is he going with this queen? He's still got this. Maybe he's doing that to support the pawn coming down as well. Although, yeah, okay, yeah. Doing that to support the pawn coming down because the knight can actually take if he did push. Okay, open my eyes. Right, okay, that makes sense. Take the arrows off. So they are looking to push the pawn. Queen's coming back. If he do, does push, he's got the queen supporting now. It allows the bishop to get back in the game, but the queen is blocking. It's not really going to go for an exchange because they've got the rook. Knight can come here attacking the rook. Rook comes off. No, he can't do that. What are you about? Knight can take. Hmm, interesting. He can still put... No, whoa, 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 whoa. what's going on here? He's still keeping the pressure on this pawn. Oh, do you know? And then if he brings this bishop here, he's got three pieces on there. Oh, it looks like our guys let them in. Bishop here. He can't do nothing about that, really. Oh, 
exact spot. <laughs> they let them in. You have to understand your basics of chess. Simple basic chess. Oh, dear me. It's not saying it's over, but it looks quite favourable. I mean, this queen just dancing around, grabbing pawns, not working his pieces together, not really looking at what the opponent can do to them and trying to block it off as, as best possible. All simple, basic chess stuff. Oh, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. That's good. I'm impressed because of the level of play that we're seeing. Um, I just like to see humanised chess play, you know, with errors, with blunders, and just, it's more realistic, isn't it? You know, it's, um, no games are perfect in the game of chess. Even Grandmaster games are not perfect, you know, so, uh, yeah, loving it, loving it. So the King's moved off, but I don't think that really makes much difference because either the Knight can take or the Bishop can take because the, if the rook takes them, they're losing the rook anyway. Because they will have a discover check with the queen. That's the way I'm seeing that. There's two. Yeah, there we go. So the knight can go anywhere. Unless, of course, the king's going to well, he can't move. He'd have to move here. But there's going to be like a double, double whammy check on him. So it's too much. It's too much. And knight can go here. Can it go onto the knight? Rook, no, it can go here. It can go here. It can go here, but it just can't get to the queen. But it could act as a blocker, couldn't it? For something. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Either way, the knight can go anywhere because of the check from the queen. Blocking the queen. It's got the check on the king. King can hide away here. But then you do have a little bit of... Ooh, not really. Can't go here, but you can come back and put a check on. But then that would be a draw. Because the pawn is there. So that, He's got his own check, but that's, to me, not going to help them. And Black knows this. And... The queen has no protection on it now, so let's see how fancy this is going to get. Knight moves back with the check from the king of queen. King goes. I mean, it could try and hide here. Doesn't have to go there. but the knight can just go backwards and forwards and get a draw. I mean, that they're a higher rated player, so they might just go for a draw. I doubt it, though. So it's white's go. I'm always fo I'm just focusing on black's go because they're looking a little bit awesome. And the knight is down attacking the queen. I think that's um, that might be a half-decent touch because it's kind of, if the knight goes and puts the check, then the Knight will just take the queen off the board because that's the piece that's doing the check. Now, in these circumstances, I've seen this happen many times where what I've just explained, they'll still think, oh, I've got the check on, so I'll move the knight out of the way because they're in fancy mode. And then they'll negate the fact that the piece was under attack. Oh, my God, they did. Brilliant. So they've got 19 minutes left of this arena. I'm really enjoying... Um, narrating this um, section you know, as we said our player was the highest rated player in the tournament at the beginning so we decided to follow them and you can see the amount that you can see the performance levels that you would kind of expect from this type of um, level of player but the key thing for me is really understanding um, chess basics Managing your centre as best possible with your pieces working as a team together. Managing the key spaces, the key pieces, and utilising appropriate strategy and planning. Oh, he's played this guy already. There's not many people in this. Mind you, it is a 10-minute thing, so you don't get that many. Right, so he's played this player already, and he's won. Okay, they're a lower-rated player. Let's see. Oh, he's going for this again. So they're just allowing the um, 
opponent to come in, obviously they're just going to attack with single attacks, as we said. And they're just blocking the own bishop as well. I mean, I'm probably looking for the knight to come here, coming for a, a capturing this pawn. No, he's going for Fianchetto. Oh, my days. What happened then? He just take a pawn. So he's going for a sacrifice, trying to open up the king's area. But did that improve their position at all? I mean, this bishop is protecting the knight at the minute. Again, he's probably looking for the same thing that we probably saw before. With the queen coming across here, attacking the pawn. It's very similar, isn't it? Yes, yeah, not it's not utilizing the best use of pieces working together as a team. These are all single attacks, single calculations, and they're falling foul of their bad positions every single time, really. Oh, not again. It's going for the same opening. So I think that's what happened, what I was talking about, even though I didn't see it. The opponent did try and do that same thing because just looking at the end result of the game, um, they tried to squeeze the queen around and stuff and they just lost out. Okay, yeah, this opening is not very good for them. This is, they've learned this from some sort of course, you know, they can't do anything else. <laughs> they just cannot do anything else. I'm not breaking away from it at all in any way, shape or form. So all this space in the centre now. And let's see if there's going to be the, any snippet of teamwork at all. Then single attacks. He's thinking, I don't want to bring the pawn back into life. Sometimes it doesn't really matter too much. So he's just going to get his own pawns doubled now. What did I just see? Sacrifice of some... I don't know what that was. That looked funky. So he got, he got a pawn, I suppose. Yeah, a bit arty, man. A bit arty. Oh, that was a gift, wasn't it? Crikey. Nice single attack there. I think White's going to resign. Whose guy is it? Right, let's just flick back here. Wow, the moves really quick. Okay, so that was taken. White's still playing. Obviously, there's a check coming on the king. It's on the dark square as the rook. White's offered a draw. The bishop's coming back, attacking the rook, but then the pawn's getting taken, so maybe they're not going to do that. Uh, nope. Oh, no, the bishop's gone. They moved too quick. Ouch. And resign. Okay, yep. Okay, so they're attacking the knight. Knight's looking to come. I don't know. Maybe I don't, well, that's the question. Don't know what this knight is doing. It's not got any support to come here. So it's just a take first. Takes with the queen. Get castled. No, no, he's not going to take that. Don't want that knight hanging around there, though. Yeah. And then get the knight out. Castle then, let's go castle. Could still take the knight. Yeah, castle. Knight goes here. Don't know if the bishop's going to take it or not. Oh, come on. Queen takes. There's a kind of check, check on the king thing going on. Rook goes back, yep, knight comes not there, maybe here. He's got three pieces on there. Queen comes across, get the rook across. Maybe get the knight up. 
I don't think they've got enough patience to do that, but we'll see. Maybe the knight's going to come here. Yes! Okay, so that's one out of four moves there. Oh, that's not... Takes. Oops, let's take that off. Queen's under threat at the minute, so nothing major, nothing major. But the knight can then come here and get the queen off the board. If he goes there, ouch, that's going to hurt. Because they have the check on the king. That's going to hurt. And resign. Nope, it's still moving. <laughs> Thought it was going to take with the queen. There we go. That was pretty smooth. Yeah, that was better. A better usage of the space that you've, you've had. And working the pieces together. Uh, to basically squish the king. So it's almost like it got a bit of super juice there. Nice one. So they've played all the way through at the minute. Have they got paired or have they gone off? Or yep. So that's um, that last game there. I suppose that that's them redeeming themselves in my eyes in terms of at least you know using a bit of planning and a bit of strategy, <clears throat> better position play. You know kind of looking at well how am I going to end up in these sort of moves what pieces are supporting which pieces which squares are available for me safely how am I going to land am I going to land safely when I make this move oh okay um he likes this opening that's fine but it's not fine for me but I have to accept that this is what he's doing Fianchetto's oh Mouse slip. Mouse slip. Damn it. What are you going to do? Okay, so they're white swarming in, but at this moment in time, his opponents are not taking advantage of this um, kind of this weak opening, sitting back waiting for people to come in because they're just plastered all over the place and they're not really working the team together. So he's getting lucky at this moment in time. The last game that they had, I mean, playing as white, I think they probably play a little bit better as white in terms of working their pieces together. And But I think from what we've seen, the ones that they played as white, they don't seem as strong. They Yes, they're going forward, but it's the single attacks. Only the last game that we saw worked pieces together and felt half decently okay. So at least he's trying to get his uh, king to safety. At least they don't have a dark square bishop to start plumping here and x-raying through. So they must be looking to exchange off the rooks. Just give the king some space. Greedy munching pawns. Can they not just hold back a little bit and just get position first and then do that? Don't need to greedy munch the pawns. Just um, leave them. Come back. Is he giving them a bit of tempo to get settle, settled? Yeah, comes back. Owning the files is crucial and key. And look at this. The opponent's just giving them, so they're making them look good. But what we're highlighting is that there's fundamental basics that really probably need fine-tuning. So simple capture now, yep, and now coming here. Yes, they are up a rook, but still, that the opponent gave them that. And just takes, and then he's going to be resigning now. Anytime soon, he's got checkmate there. No, it's not checkmate, but it's a check. Bishop's going to be looking to try and do something like this to attack, attack, attack. Or maybe not. Okay, so what does the king think it's actually doing? The bishop, all the bishop had to do was come here, tack this pawn. Bishop can't take, and then you've got two pieces on the one piece. So getting a bit arty now, but it's, I don't think they can lose this one. Arena's only got five minutes left, so I think this will be the last one that we watch. And unless, of course, it comes on straight away with another game. 
So yeah, it solidifies in my head the standard of, standard of play that I would expect to see playing um, of under 1500s. Oh, it's come on straight away, so we may as well watch this one. And this opponent really does like this opening and is obviously gaining some sort of advantages with it. But like I've said, the advantages he's getting just from watching the games are because the opponent is allowing them to do that. Um, it's not that this opening is any good because it's, to me, the fun, the basics of chess are not being utilised. And the opponents obviously are not thinking that way. They're just thinking, whoa, I've got all this space, so I'm going to overextend my pieces with single attacks. And that is what's making the opponent look good. But as I've mentioned, I think the higher up they go, they probably will meet people who are doing this type of opening as well. Uh, <laughs> um, but they should be taking more advantage of the space that he's allowing them to have and work their pieces together to actually strangulate this type of opening. So it's been very interesting watching this arena. And it's attacking because the queen is supporting, so the bishop can't take. If the bishop does take, then the queen takes. Knight's going to have to come here, so the queen is defending. So they're going to be down. A pawn, it looks like. Even a bishop, a minor piece. Yeah, one, two, three. One, two. Not looking at what the opponent can potentially do to you. So crucial in the games that we've watched the this player play. The blind spots. They, they might not feel like they're blind spots because the way that they're manoeuvring, it's like, okay, I'm kind of expecting that. But to me, they look like blind spots because the snowball seems to keep building and building and... They're getting lucky. And there's always elements of luck in chess type thing. But I think you want to, you're kind of looking to reduce the element of bad luck and create good luck. So these are bad luck things that the opponent's going through at the minute. So he's just getting bad lucky. He's looking for this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he's looking for that. Gets the bishop off the ball for free, but is it positionally going to work? He can still come back because he's got the um, support here. But if the king comes here, the queen is there as well. So where else does the knight go? It'll just have to come back and then there's an exchange going. But he's still going to have two an, an extra minor piece. So it's not really a free bishop. Oh, come on. Maybe he couldn't go there because obviously the king queen is going to be coming here, but could he not just um, take there? White's offered the draw now. I think they've realised that they made a bit of a bit a bit of a mistake there. All right, yeah, they've allowed they've they've allowed black back in. What did I say? That bad luck thing that I was just mentioning. That's how lucky this player is. In you know when he's playing as black. Um, because the opponents are allowing them to gain these positions, that wasn't, that was not a, <laughs> that should not have happened at all. He's looking for this, but all this is protected here. He's can't squeeze in here. He's maybe looking for trying to attack the rook, but the rook can defend itself because the knight's defending. But then I suppose he can take the knight off the board. So that's probably what they're thinking with their single attack. No teamwork here whatsoever. That was a bad luck situation that they had going on there. Very lucky with the bad luck. Ah, oh, shocking, shocking, shocking. <laughs> so the opponent's still plus one. Okay, so he's not taking now. Maybe he's still looking to stay here. Is there some... There's none of that. But he's going for a bit of a check. Maybe he's not going for that because the knight's protecting. Rook's coming to attack, comes here, maybe attacks the knight, bishop takes. Anyway, he's clawed it back. 
and there's only four, five, three, two, one seconds of the arenas. We'll see this one out. We'll have to see who came tops. It maybe he did, maybe he didn't. Don't know. Bishop's in. Who oh, attacking the rook? Knight attacking the knight. Or not. Rook's got support. Maybe he's going this way and attacking. Or maybe he's doing nothing like that whatsoever. Maybe he's bringing his knights out to attack the bishop. Something here. The poor king is a little bit jammed in there. Oh. King can't go here. He can't go there. Rook's going to have to. Brings the rook to defend, but it gets hit. Mm hmm. Bishop out. Knight attacking the rook. Instead of managing the file. So he's going to bring it there now that it's done that. Okay, so we're back again to this situation. And what the that was a bit special it maybe the thinking the arena's over now I just need to just I don't, that was a bit special weird so he's got like he's thrown this one away hasn't he yeah that was weird. Just want to see the standings. Do, do, do. I think the advantage has gone there. I didn't know. Don't know what that was. Mm hmm. Let's plats go. <laughs> A key thing for me, for this player, is really understanding the power of the rooks and what benefits they do actually have and what they like and what they don't like. They do like open files. They do like managing the open files, doubling them up on the open files because this was not a clear usage of rooks throughout the games that he'd shown. Um, no management of the, the open files with the rooks and that is their bread and butter. And that, again, is basic chess, which comes back again to, this is my closing statement, understanding the rudimental, elementary, basic steps for chess really does help your chess play. Staying away from fancy, high-level, strategic planning, thinking, openings, mid-games, end-games, staying away from those types of things when you're in the early stages of your own chess development will help your chess development if you stick with the basics of chess. When we're seeing these games that we've just watched now, there's a lot of a lot of errors, a lot of non-teamwork, non-calculations, only one, two, if anything, calculations, probably just one calculations. There was only one game in this game where um, our player played what I thought was a half decent game of working the pieces together and just appropriately finding key spaces and key pieces to actually squish the opponent's king in a nice fashion with teamwork. The rest of the games have been a little bit one calculation ish, one move calculation type thing with not really any essence of planning or strategy. It's all, it's just been basically around, okay getting a little bit lucky with their position because wherever that landing is like, oh yeah, my piece is here so I can do this and I can work this piece together with this. But you can tell 
that wasn't their plan. It was just luck that they ended up in those types of positions. So it's really a conscious effort to really understand. Comes back again to how your pieces are going to end up. What position are they going to be in? Are they sacrificing sure footing for a kill strike? As in the same Batman. You know? Or is it sure footing that you're landing on and you've got a beautiful, appropriate supporting mechanism to be able to make the beautiful, executed, safely, um, safely executed attacking process. Key thing. So now in this game here, potentially the opponent, White, could still blob the game. Because we've seen so many situations like these with these types of ratings where advantages can be so easily lost. And now that I'm talking about that, that's probably going to occur. So we'll see, because they've got too many pieces on the board as white. So they have to work their pieces together. And that's one of the key things that I've said about this level of play is understanding working their pieces together. Our guy, again, has only showed one game like that where they worked the pieces together. Big issue with the blind spots in terms of looking at what the opponent can potentially do to them, which has caused them issues in a few of the games that they've played. It looks like they're trying to tighten up the blind spot thing now and they're, they're basically saying, no, I'm going to block everything off that they're attempting to do. Hopefully they're going to make a mistake. This might be the type of game that is going to make me laugh my socks off if White actually loses the advantage. Oh, as we speak, checkmate. <laughs> oh, let's have a look at the arena. Let's have a look at the results. Oh, second. 